Back in the garage today. In the garage. Back in the garage. Back in the garage today. What's going on, guys? Back in the garage today, working on my 2008 KTM 990 Adventure. I'm actually going to check the valves, which I'm going to show in this video. We'll see if we have to adjust them or not. Also, I'm going to show you how to replace the spark plugs. Now, you need to get the fuel tanks off before you do any of this. If you need to know how to do that, click on the uh, video up here. Also, I do have the air box removed. While not necessary to replace the spark plugs, it is necessary to access the, uh, the uh, front cylinder and pull off the valve cover there. So uh, check that video out up here. But um, anyway, we're gonna jump into it. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is pull the plugs and then we're gonna go check the valves. Okay, so starting out on the rear cylinder, the first thing we're gonna do is undo this plug on our coil and then we're gonna pull this coil up out of place. One thing I've found, if, if, if it is difficult to get out, just take a big screwdriver, pop it up out of place, get it right out of there. Now, I have replaced the plugs on this thing before and I had to make up my own uh, spark plug socket. This is a thin well to fit the 16 millimeter. Now, if you have a newer model than my 990, it probably had, probably needs a 14 millimeter, but if you're dealing with the 16, you definitely want a thin well. I'll uh, link this down in the description below. This is one I ordered from uh, procycle.us, so uh, let's see if it works. All right, so I used a long extension with a universal up top. It does seem to fit in there just fine. Let's see if we can get this pulled out. There we go, there's this plug. So if we get a close-up shot on it, it uh, looks like she is running a little rich, but uh, that's all right, because we're gonna open up the air box with some other mods I'm planning on doing today. Okay, so getting a look up here on the front cylinder, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna disconnect the plug, and then we're gonna pop the uh, coil out of place. So here's a look at the front plug. Again, uh, kind of dark. But um, anyway, if you don't need to know how to check the valves, you can check the timestamp ahead for replacement of the plugs, but I'm gonna go into checking the valves here next, which is gonna involve popping the valve covers. Okay, so with the spark plugs out, next thing we need to do, and we're gonna start on the rear cylinder, is remove the four valve cover bolts. I have found one of these 10 millimeter ratchet wrenches has worked great on the 1290 models I've worked on, so I'm gonna do the same thing here on the 990. All right, as you can see, I've got the valve cover bolts out. Well, just keep in mind, we do have these little rubber uh, washers here, uh, or, or, or grommets, whatever you want to call them. Now what we're going to do is just pop this valve cover loose. I'm not going to be able to get the camera in here to show you, but then we're just going to have to fish it up here out of the frame. And because the throttle bodies are loose up here, we ought to have plenty of clearance to get it out. All right, so this is our valve cover off the bike. Obviously, we want to inspect the valve cover gasket. There is also this gasket that, that uh, sits around where the spark plug goes in. If everything looks good, we can set this aside and then we can get to checking the valves. All right, so on the left-hand side of the bike using a hex 14 bit, we are going to pull this plug out of place. Shouldn't take much. There should be an O-ring on the back of it, so just be wary of that. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it out so that we don't take the chance of damaging it and just put it back on the plug. Something that's a little bit different than it is on the modern uh, LC8 engines that use a socket on here, and, and I think it's a 15 or 16 millimeter. This one actually uses the hex 14 bit, just like we took out of there. So now we're gonna grab our ratchet, and what we're going to do is we're going to begin to turn this motor over, and then I'm gonna show you how we get top dead center on the rear cylinder so we can check the valves. All right, so what we want to do is we want to turn this, we want to turn the motor over by using this ratchet and we're going to turn it counterclockwise direction. Then let me show you what it needs to look like. We want to turn it until the camshafts, they each have a dot on them. It's going to be a little hard to see. I'll put a picture up because I can zoom in a little better. We want them both on the outside and we want them aligned with the top of the cylinder head. Once we've done that, then we're going to grab our feeler gauges. These are the intake valves. These are the exhaust valves. The intake valves, the tolerance is uh, 0.10 to 0.15 millimeters. What we want to do is you just want to slide your feeler gauge down in, put your fattest one in, or put your skinniest one in, work your way up to your fattest. If, if it's out of spec and it's uh, too loose, probably not a big deal, but if it's too tight, you definitely want to fix it. Then back here on the exhaust valves, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take your feeler gauge, press it down in there, 
we are looking for 0.25 millimeters to 0.30 millimeters. If it's out of spec, it means we're gonna have to adjust it. So unfortunately, one of my valves is too tight on the exhaust, the uh, exhaust valve on the right-hand side of the bike. So um, you're gonna get to learn how, adjust, how to uh, adjust them today, much uh, to my dismay. At the top of the engine, we're gonna use a five millimeter hex in each of these fasteners to pull out the, uh, the cam carrier. Something else we're gonna wanna do is this uh, spark plug guide. Just get a flat blade or something underneath it. Go ahead and get this pulled out of there. There are a couple O-rings holding it in so there'll be a little bit of pressure. It's gonna be a little hard to see, but we got all of the fasteners out of here and now what we need to do is pry this carrier off. See, it wants to take the camshafts with it there. All right, there's the carrier. We're gonna set that aside. Now we don't really need to mess with the intake, so we're gonna go ahead and pull out the exhaust cam. So this is what we're removing. That is our valve shim right there, so we'll get a measurement on it in a second. Let me show you where it came from. This is a little bit older school shim under bucket design, and by bucket, that was a little thing I showed you. This is the bucket right here. I'm gonna leave that one in there for a moment, but all I'm doing is just taking a magnet and popping it out of there. It'll pop right out of place. Just make sure the shim comes along with it like the one I just showed you. All right, you can see I got my calibers out. I'm just measuring these. These are the same size that I use on the 1290, 1190, those sorts of things. They're the uh, 10 millimeter size ones. Next thing we want to do is it doesn't have a size printed on it for the thickness. So I'm going to use my calipers and then I'm going to write down... I believe we're going to call that 2.55 and then I got to do a little bit of math to figure out what thickness I'm gonna to have to use in order to get these uh, valves in spec. So I wrote down my numbers here on a piece of paper. Now what I'm gonna do is I pulled my shim kit out. I'm gonna do some quick math to figure out which uh, shim I'm gonna to have to put in place to tighten, or not to tighten it up, but to loosen it up a little bit. So I need to go with a little bit thinner thickness than what's in there right now since the valves were tight. Now with the correct shim size, it's gonna be hard to see, but I'm gonna set it back down into place. You can see, hopefully, it's sitting right there where my finger is. And I'm going to take this little bucket and put it back down over the top. Now, I also need to reshim this one. I'm going to take my magnet, if it'll work. There you go. You can see it's pulling it up out of place. Now it left the shim under there, so I'm gonna to have to go back in and retrieve it. Okay, so I did the math on that one. Got the uh, shim back in place, got the bucket back over top of it. Now we need to get the cams back in and realign, get the carrier back on, and then check it all again before we put it back together. So gonna to be a little tough to see, but just like before, we want the dots on the outside lined up, make sure everything is in place properly. Then we're gonna put the carrier back on. Now one thing about the carrier, we want to tighten from inside out. So we're going to get that back into place, we're going to get the fasteners uh, just kind of snug, and then we're going to torque it inside to out, and I'm going to put the torque specs up on the screen right now, so uh, you can check those out, and uh, we'll get this thing locked back in. All right, we got everything torqued back down to 10 newton meters. Now don't forget, this is going to go back into place, but I'm not going to pop it in there yet because what I like to do is turn the motor over one more time and check the valves before we put everything back together. Okay, so with everything back in, I turned the motor over again and checked, and now my two exhaust valves are at 0.79 millimeters, which is perfectly in spec, and I can go back to getting the valve cover back on the rear one right after I put the spark plug uh, thing in there. All right, so now what I like to do is on these two half moon cutouts, I use a bit of uh, Honda Bond high temp silicone, just put a light little bead on there and on the corner to make sure everything seats. If you want to put some on the outside corners, you can to help it stay, uh, help it stay in place. But uh, usually the half moon is good enough. Okay, so you can see we've got the valve covered back in place. Just check all the way around. Make sure you get a good seal. And then these bolts up top, we're going to do them in a crisscross fashion. And we're going to torque them down to 10 newton meters and then move on to the front cylinder. All right, so up here on the front cylinder, we've got to move some stuff out of the way. So on each side of the radiator, took out this bolt, and then down here on the bottom, took out this one. That allows us to rock the radiator forward a little bit. And then we've got to get these couple of hoses unclamped right here, 
and then get the same uh, 10 millimeter bolts we took out, uh, the, the valve cover bolts that we took out on the rear. And get these unhooked first with some uh, pliers, hopefully I can get on there. Maybe I'll just leave them connected and pop those covers off. I'll see what works best. All right, so if we take a look down here at the valve cover, you can see right there. I pulled, and you got a couple of options. You can see what I've done is pulled that hose and clamp back. And let me show you what the piece looks like. This is one of our, if we can focus, this is one of the pieces that goes in there. Now, this is after the fact, um, but I'm showing you guys this now. You can either leave those in and pull the hose back or you can pull this out. What happens is, you know, this is a 14 year old bike. This plastic becomes brittle sitting there, you know, in, in the top of the cylinder or the top of the valve cover. And it may become brittle and it may crack. That's what happened on one of mine. This is the cracked one. Uh, you can see where it's not all the way there. And then if we take a look here, these are the new ones. So I went ahead and bought these new uh, L uh, outlets or uh, L intakes, went ahead and got a couple of new silicone O-rings. You can replace both of them for right around three, four dollars. I'm gonna go ahead and put fresh ones in. So um, anyway, you got a couple options, you can take it out. You can try to pop this out after you undo the little eight millimeter holding bracket in, or you can just pop the hose clamp off and pull the hose off of it, uh, kind of like you see here. Okay, so up here on this front cylinder, we got all the valve cover bolts removed, and then these little brackets, we just backed off enough so that I can pop these hoses out. I gotta get this other one, and then we should be able to lift this valve cover up out of place. All right, so there's the valve cover out. We'll get it cleaned up, but uh, now it's time to check the valves on the front cylinder. So it's gonna be the same process. We're gonna turn the motor over like we did before, but since they left me almost enough room just to see, I'm not gonna be able to get camera back there, but same sort of deal on the uh, on the gears we want the dots lined up on the outside across the top of the cylinder head and it's not that you can see much down there but with the cylinder at top dead center now i'm going to pull out my feeler gauges check my intake and exhaust same uh, specs as the rear obviously uh, 0.10 to 0.15 on the intakes and 0.25 to 0.30 on the exhaust all right, so fortunately, all the valves on the front cylinder were then spec, so I got all the valve cover bolts torqued back down to 10 newton meters. Now I need to get these little breather hoses popped back into place with their clamps and throw some spark plugs in. All right, so next up, we're gonna install some new spark plugs. Hopefully I can keep it in focus. I'll put it up on the screen. Now, one thing we need to do with these spark plugs is remove this top cap. To do that, it just twists off. We're just gonna grab a pair of needle nose pliers and pull that off. And then I'll put the spark plug gap up on the screen, just make sure they are appropriately gapped. So we're not going to be able to show this on camera. We're going to drop the spark plug back down in to the uh, front cylinder there and get it tightened down using our 16 millimeter thin well socket. Okay, so if we take a look down here, we've got all the valve cover bolts back in. They're all torqued to 10 newton meters. Uh, the spark plug is back in. I haven't put the ignition coil back in. Next, I'm going to take uh, the little uh, L-shaped L plastic things here. We're gonna get them back down into place. We are gonna uh, tighten down the eight millimeter nut down here that, with this top mounting bracket on. Then we're gonna slide the hose clamps back over on each side and then we're done with this part. Okay, so if we look down there, we can see we got the hose clamp on. One last thing you wanna do is put a thin layer of grease on those O-rings. We're gonna pop them back into, down into place, get the little brackets put back on. We also need to put the ignition coil back in and plug it up. So give me just a moment. And that's what it look, should uh, look like when it's done. We obviously got the oil lines running back in. We got the little holders on top. We got our ignition coil back in as well our, as our uh, ignition, plug, ignition coil wire plugged back in with a little bit of dielectric grease. We are all done. All right, so we wanna make sure our radiator's all hooked back up and we also need to put this plug back in. Remember there is an O-ring on it. We're gonna use that same hex 14. Don't put it in too tight because it's just a piece of plastic. All right guys, so that is how you check and adjust the valves as well as replace the spark plugs on one of these KTM 990s. A Little bit easier job than it is on some of the more modern bikes that have the timing chain going around the dual overhead cams versus just having the gear driven uh, cams. So makes it a little bit easier, still a little bit of a job, but you know, with some simple hand tools and some filler gauges, 
Takes a while, but not that difficult. So if you need to know how to put the bike back together, there will be other videos in this series show you how to put the gas tank back on, how to remove the air box, put the air box, throttle bodies, all that stuff back on. But once again, that's how you check and adjust the valves as well as replace the uh, spark plug. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about the process, let me know down in the comments section below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'll also link all the applicable you know, parts and stuff you may need to do this. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.